Christy, I think we should call this our winter closeout video. You really think winter's over? I hope so. I don't know. It snowed just a day or two ago, and it's late March. Yeah. Well, that's what our video is about. Partially the snow. You're going to see a lot of video here from our hopefully last snow plowing of the year. That's why we're calling it the winter closeout. Yeah. You're going to put the snow blade up, and then it's going to snow again. I hope not. Don't say it's going to snow again. It's late March. This snow was really wet. It was like 35 degrees Fahrenheit most of the time while the snow was coming down. Finally got a little colder. And it snowed hard enough that even at that temperature, we still ended up with four or five inches. I usually start out with neighbor Jimmy's driveway. It used to be neighbor Bob's. It's kind of the easiest one to get to. This was a sloppy mess. It would have been hard to deal with with a snowblower. One of those classic central Indiana situations where I had to get out and plow it off quickly before it melted. Okay, so it's late March and it snowed a lot today. Yesterday, it was almost 50 and beautiful and sunny. It's pretty, but I'm ready for spring. Not snow, go away. You saw a winter closeout in the title. Probably thought something was on sale. That's not the case unless you want to buy winter. I'll sell that to you pretty cheap at this point. We're ready for spring. So that's what we mean by winter closeout. What do you think of my fancy safety yellow hat there? Or is it safety green? It's really not taking very long at all to plow these since it's so wet, it's just clumping together. So it's really not much issue. Before we had Johnny, I used to try to use my walk behind snowblower to do a lot of these driveways. I probably didn't do as many as I'm doing now with Johnny, but I've always enjoyed clearing driveways. I probably wouldn't have been quite as aggressive if I'd have just had a shovel though. Christy and I are really struggling with what to do for the next steps in our business. We had a lot of situations last year and already one estimate this year that just really need a slightly larger tractor than what we've got. At the same time, most of our projects are a perfect fit for Johnny. In fact, a lot of our projects we wouldn't even be able to use a larger tractor. So we've spent a lot of time this winter discussing the possibility of purchasing a second larger tractor. At first, you might think that, assuming I could get finance committee approval, that that would be an easy thing to do. But when we think deeper, we begin to realize all the complexities that are involved in that decision. For instance, where are we going to store a larger tractor? We can't fit any more in our current shed, and the city of Carmel won't allow us to build anything any bigger or any addition onto our current shed. This is compounded by the fact that we would need additional larger attachments as well. We've discussed the idea of building a shed up on our uh, four and a half acre farm that you've seen in other videos. There's some challenges with that. First, it's over 10 miles away, and it's away from where most of our customer base is. So this would add a lot of time and challenge to our already busy evenings. We'd have to drive all the way up there, load everything, and then drive to the actual job. We're also a little nervous about security in that situation. With no one there to watch it, even a locked building is a pretty easy target. Beyond storage, there are other challenges as well. For instance, transportation. Our Honda Ridgeline handles Johnny with no problems. Casey, on the other hand, is a load, and we expect that any larger tractor might be a little too much for it. Optimally, we'd look at a larger trailer that we could actually haul two pieces at the same time. All this would require a new truck. Wow. And I thought a tractor was expensive. And then think back to that storage issue. Where would we put that longer, bigger trailer? 
I guess that means we have to move. And the problem is land around here is really expensive. Really, really expensive. expensive. For instance, we looked at a five acre plot uh, just this last week that they want 600000 for. The house on it's nice. It's just not $600,000 nice. The lot and property is beautiful. It's got a pond on it. It's got a couple acres of kind of just rolling pasture land, you might say. Ah. It even has a little shed. Yeah. But... Which would get by for a little while for us. It's not as nice as our little shed here, but, no. but it would get by. But six hundred thousand uh, dollars—that's a lot of money. It is for us, so we just don't really think that's a, a near-term option for us to be able to do. So we could use some help, some advice. What would you do yeah, if you were in our situation? Below. And no answer is acceptable if it doesn't include the ability to get another tractor. <laughs> Come on, somebody help me out. <laughs> oh. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching the snowplow video while we've been doing this moving and... Um, I hope you don't have to use it again. I hope not, because we have to get it all down again, don't we? Yeah. Meanwhile, hey, take a look at our website, tractortimewithtim.com, and subscribe. Leave a comment. And we'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, Time with, with Tim. Tim.